Good morning, followers of this um, channel. It's Phil Beckwith, I'm back with you. This is um, part two. You've probably just watched part one, hopefully, and um, it's next day. When I left you last night, I was just doing the last little bits of um, sorting of the woodwork. Cleaned down the woodwork, and I gave it a coat of Zinza 123, just as a grip primer, ready for me coming in today, um, so I know I've got a grip primer that's really dry. So I'm in this morning, and um, my worst fears, it doesn't always work, does it? The ceiling had two coats of anti-reflex too. Now, I had a feeling it was a little bit thin, and I'm looking this morning, it's looking a bit, it's not patchy, we call it grinny in the trade, it looks just showing through a bit. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna give the ceiling a, an extra coat, I'm not gonna show you that, so the ceiling have had three coats. What's it gonna take me off an hour? Not long, so I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna let that dry, but what I've come in for this morning, I'm gonna go around all the top edge, um, of the skirting, give it a coat of, well, coat, I'm gonna give it a bead of cork, just to cork all the edges, um, any of the angles into the skirting corners, and generally just round the, I don't know if you can see, because I did these last night, you know, just round these to neaten them up. I told you about contractors and people using polyfiller, and it goes brittle and it breaks away, so, what I'm going to do is just put some cork in it, let that go off. If it needs an extra bit of cork, I will do. Using the one, two, oh, it's calling it one, two, three. It's Red Devil um, one time filler. It's the cork. Let me show you. It's that one. Oh, I get confused, dear me. Uh, one time cork. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm not going to show you doing it. It's quite straightforward. Any of the cracks in the architrave. Just down these angles there. If there's anything that's um, open, I'm just gonna cork it with that. Literally just wet my finger and just wipe it in. I don't wanna wipe it out, so I'm not gonna use a cloth. So I'm gonna do that this morning and I'm gonna get a coat on the ceiling. I'll probably pop back um, after lunch and then I'll have the heater on. The ceiling will be dry and I'll start bringing the walls um, forward so we can have a look at that. So let's try and keep this uh, an easy one and um, we'll hopefully see some results soon. So, um, see you in a bit. So here we are everybody, um, back after dinner. Since I've seen you last, I've corked up, just gone around with the, uh, I keep getting it wrong, don't I? It's the Red Devil One Time Cork. I've gone round, top edge of the skirting, going all the way round, I'm pointing to areas you can't see. I've also, um, that little bit of filling that I did yesterday, I've just got a bit of sandpaper, sanded that down just by hand, made sure that was all all right. And then if anything had sunk, I've got a little bit of fine surface. I don't know if you've seen this before. It was a, a freebie from the decorating show. Isomat, it's the um, acryl stucco filler. It's, it's like a fine surface filler. So anything that I saw needed any filler, I've just, um, Filled those over dead nicely. So what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to start painting the walls. There's actually two options you could have done with this. Um, you could have either painted your woodwork and finished it and put some tape across and then done your walls, or like I'm going to do, which is more the traditional way of painting, which is paint your ceilings first, then your walls, then finish you with your woodwork. So what I'm going to do is paint the walls two coats. You go slightly onto the skirting with your paintbrush. I'm using, going to use an arrow worthy, slightly onto your top edge of your skirting. Once your walls are dry, you can go around, just fine nib down that skirting that yesterday I put a one, two, three grip primer on from Zinza because it was going over, I was going over oil based. So what I would do is do my walls, give my skirting a little bit of a light, sand down, and then finish off hand cutting in, because I don't need tape. I can actually neatly cut in the top edge of the skirting. Now, when I'm doing the top edge of the skirting, I'd be using a smaller arrow worthy, which is an inch and a half, to do that top edge, and then fill in. With that, will be fine, or you can do a two inch. So, um, for now, I'm just gonna start mixing the paint up, and I explain, I'm using stuff that I've got in the workshop. I've got two colors that are same. These are the two there, and I've got one color that's not the same. So, I'm just gonna start mixing these up now, Put them into my roller bucket because that's the bucket that's got enough room in it. 
I'm going to mix all these three together so it's an even consistency and then um, we'll try it on the wall. So bear with me while I mix these up and then we'll see what the colour's like. Right, I'm about ready to go. Mixed up that colour, it's quite a nice colour. It's got a bit of, you can probably see it in the bucket, it's got a bit of a greeny tinge to it. It's light, that's what I want. I didn't want anything too heavy and dark in this room. And um, I've just, what I've done is I've just tested it out. I can't say it. Just tested it out, brushing it onto the vinyl silk that's on. Um, I've just flashed over anywhere that I've got any filler, which is, can you just see there, just a spot prime. And then back over that other side, you can see I've just spot prime those bits of filler. Same with side of that door frame. So anything that's been filled, just spot prime it before you start putting your top coats on. Now, you know, when I spoke to you this morning, I wasn't happy with the ceiling because that Anti-Reflex 2 was actually the paint that I've used before when I've been spraying. I had to give it another coat. So this morning the ceiling all had another coat and I still use that Nor roller sleeve and roller frame. Now, Coming onto the walls, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use, I'm going to try a different one. I've got two fussy blokes and it's, um, two fussy blokes, it's the semi-smooth and it's the 10 mil um, nap. Very similar to the ones that you've probably seen in the video when I was working away in Europe using the 10 mil and 5 mil. So I'm going to try these on the wall, on the wall this time, see what it's like. Um, again, a bit like the Nor, that was one that didn't shed anything, it was a lint free. So I didn't do any washing out on that, and it was fine. I didn't have any fluff left on the ceiling or anything like that. Now with this, um, I've shut on facilities for washing anything out, but I didn't want to wash it out anyway. What I'm going to do, I've just wrapped some tape around it, and uh, if, I can find the <laughs> if I can find the end of the tape, what I'm going to do is just pull off the tape, so if there is anything loose on the surface of the... There you go. That's, If there's anything loose on the actual end of the um, pile of the roller, it'll come off with the tape uh, adhesive. But you know, well, I can't even get the, the bit off, so there you go. I've also got the, I've been very lucky. There you go, let's get that all off. All looks good. There's a little bit of, a little bit of, a little bit of fluff came off with the um, tape. I'm using the Two Fussy Blokes 9 inch roller frame as well. So hand in glove, we quite like that. It does have the screw on it for um, bits of little fluff there. That's what you don't want going onto your paint. And that's why you put the tape around it. I think that's all right. Should be all right. Yeah. If you washed it out, what I don't like about washing it out, Unless you've washed it out, you can get literally all the water out. Sometimes when you wash it out, there's still that little bit of water in it and you roll the surface and the pressure of your roller with the paint oozes a bit of moisture out of the original washing out of the water. And I don't like doing that. I'd rather just either wash them out the day before or um, put some tape around. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the paint going. I'm gonna, this end wall here, I'm just gonna do that to show you what I'm doing about cutting in and doing the top edge of the skirting because I'm not going to show you paint in the whole room. We've done all that sort of thing before. So um, bear with me. I'm just going to get that bedded in and I'll show you what we're doing here. So um, see you in a few seconds. I'm going to say, can you see me mother? I'm going to say, can you see me mother? Now I've got a duster brush. I shouldn't really need to be dusting off the top edge of the skirting because I only just corked it up this morning, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I've got a 2.5 inch um, Arrowworthy slash cut, it's the oval, semi oval, and I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do because, as I say, I don't go around with a mini roller. There's no need if you know what you're doing with your brush. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to just cut in part of the side and bring across the top. Now, this edge across there, the previous tenant, taped it down because obviously I couldn't get a decent edge. I'm gonna follow that line of the plaster. So it might be a little bit of a greyhound's back leg, but not much you can do about it. Just load your brush up. I'm just gonna get down the sides. Do that, and then you feather that fatty edge off. Right, let's try and cut in neatly. Go as close as you can, load up your brush. 
and start bringing it across. Go lower and bring it in higher. Doesn't matter if you don't get that line straight away on your first cutting in because you'll get it on the second. It's all over the place. Literally, we call it a grounds back leg. When we come to the second coat, we can just neaten that up a little bit more. See what I'm doing, just feathering that edge out. Now, if you can see me against the skirting, you're going to go onto the skirting slightly. So I cut into the skirting and then just bring it across. Going onto it, just nipping it in. Not a lot. Not a lot on there. And again, just feather that edge back out. I can actually see a few bits of filling that might need doing before I come to the final coat. So do you get what I'm doing? And I'll just show you me rolling that section there. I'm about halfway across. I've loaded the roller up. I'm going to go left to right. Just bed the roller in up and down. Close into the angles. Close in on me cutting in, bit of a skin there, get that on. Load up again. For that first coat, just get it on. I have to say that feels a nice roll of sleeve. Finish yourself laying off up and down. You don't want any tram lines. When you come to your final coat, you'll lay off up and down on a slight W. On a slight W pattern. That's not bad, I'm quite happy with that. So um, I'm gonna go off camera, I'm gonna coat this room up and then I'll show you what it's like when it's finished. Just going to show you something, bit of a trick of the trade, trick of the trade we say. You know if you've got new build properties, radiators, they're on the plastic pipes. Now if you're strong enough, or there's two of you, you can just lift them off. I've got that wedged on a roller bucket and you can paint the back and you can see where it hasn't been painted before. So what I'm going to do now is just paint the back of there. You might only need to put one coat on, and then you can lift it back on, then you don't have to worry about it. But that's what you can do. You can actually lift it off. What do you reckon of that? That's not bad, is it? Can I get it painted? Yeah. So there we have it, it's all nicely painted. Because it wasn't painted before, it's going over the old Magnolia contract emulsion, so probably won't need another one. I'll put it back on when it's dry and then just the sides, it can get a little rad roller and go any bit further. But generally, it's all painted now with the Optiva 5, so quite happy with that. So there we have it, my lovelies. That's first coated all the way around. A little bit grinny, you're starting to see as it's drying, a little bit of that uh, darker grey coming through. Fingers crossed with the Ticarilla Optiva 5, a second coat will cover. Not holding my breath, but anything's a bonus. If it needs a third, I'll have to give it a third. Uh, but other than that, I'm really pleased how it's gone on. It's lightened the room. I mean, it's a big bedroom as it is. It's actually made it feel more spacey and airy, and that's where you start getting, pick your colors right for your bedrooms. You've got advancing and receding colors. Get the wrong color, it can make a small room um, feel even more smaller, a big room, you use the right colours, you can make it feel smaller at ceiling, drop the ceiling height down just by use of colours, but this, I've got a bit more of an airy space now. Um, 
Roller, you know what I did. I used that, um, two fussy blokes, 10 mil. What did I think of it? Now, if I say I was paid and sponsored, I'd be telling you it's fantastic. The roller is really good, just like I did on the videos um, showing you painting doors with the AC Thane um, Sin paint over in Portugal. Really impressed with that nap. What I am a little bit um, annoyed about, well, it's, not, it's not a big thing, the roller starts slipping off the roller frame. Now, this is after I've tapped it on and it started to come off again when I just did that um, section of wall there. It was coming off by about a good quarter uh, of an inch and I had to tap it back on. When I used the gnaw roller and the gnaw uh, roller frame when I did the ceiling, didn't have any of that. It might be a case that I just have to part the metal bars inside to make it trap a bit more. I don't know, what do you do? Give us some comments, but it's starting to slide off. I've just got a bit of a dodgy roller frame. But other than that, I mean, I like the roller frames, I like the wooden handles that I haven't got any varnish on, you're not slipping them out. And the actual nap feel, when you're putting paint on, it's got a little bit of a spongy feel when you're applying the paint and the texture that you get as the orange peel is quite minimal, which it would be for this sort of microfiber um, nap. And it's only a 10 mil, so that's, that's great. It does hold enough paint, obviously a longer nap. If you were probably on a 14, 15 mil nap, um, would hold a lot more paint, but you'd need really a textured surface to benefit from that. Or else you get more of an orange peel. But no, um, really pleased with that. The next time you're gonna see me now is after all these walls are set and coated, and we go into the um, third part of this um, video where I just talk about doing the woodwork because I'm not going to try and do ceiling, walls and woodwork all in one video because it'll be just too long. I want to try and keep about 20 minutes each. Uh, but no, really pleased. If you've not heard of Tikarilla, Tikarilla is a Scandinavian company now owned by... Is it PPG? Yeah, flipping PPG. Does PPG own everybody? I'm not sure. So PPG, if you don't know who PPG are, um, John O's, Johnson's Paints, and that brand of paint um, manufacturing. Tikarilla, Scandinavian company, now been bought out. <sighs> Brilliant paints, water-based paints. That anti-reflex, I would I'd put my neck on the line and say one of the best ceiling paints out there. The wall paint, which is... Oh well, I prefer Optiva 5, it's a scrubbable matte, there's a 5% sheen, it's a very mild mid sheen, it's not like soft sheen or vinyl silk, you can wipe it down, so if you've got kids or dogs or a high traffic area, it's a nice flat finish with a hard wearing surface you can wipe down, but yeah, look into it uh, if you've not heard of it before, Optiva 5, they're doing Optiva 3 as well, uh, I believe this is an Optiva 7, not use that, it's a bit more shinier, but Optiva 5 is really my everyday paint. Um, for stuff like this. But no, see you on the next one. This probably video has already started popping up there. And um, third, third video in this series of this room, um, show you the finishing off where we're using WRX paint. See ya.